Hello and welcome to uh, the second part of applications of k-means clustering. In this lecture we're going to talk about a neat uh, application of k-means clustering in performing image segmentation. We're going to try to keep this lecture really brief, uh, but I just wanted to show you uh, this sort of low-level way of performing uh, image segmentation. So what is image segmentation? So image segmentation is the process of breaking up an image into separate segments. Okay, so essentially all the pixels uh, of your image that belong to the same object type, and we're going to uh, dig a little bit deeper into what that means in a little bit. So all the pixels that belong to the same object type will be assigned to the same segment of the image. Okay. Image segmentation or semantic segmentation is uh, widely used in uh, self-driving cars. So imagine there's a car driving down the street and then its camera you know, takes uh, basically pictures and uh, there is cars, there is the road, there is pedestrians. So it may create uh, one segment for the pedestrian, another segment for the street, another segment for the traffic, for the stop sign, and so on and so forth, right? So every time it sees uh, or it records pixels that belong to a pedestrian, then it takes all of those pixels and it assigns to the pedestrian image segment, okay? So why is semantic segmentation important? It's important because it's a way, basically, uh, to break down an image into meaningful regions. Okay, so it separates the image into the object of interest that we want to analyze further and the background or everything else. And of course, the state of the art uh, uh, models for performing image segmentation involve uh, deep uh, neural nets. Uh, but that's uh, something that's beyond the scope of this course, so we will not be uh, dealing with it. Okay, so let, uh, let us continue and uh, illustrate image segmentation with uh, uh, some pictures of my dog. Okay, so let's read uh, those images in, and there is a different ways of uh, reading images in. One uh, maybe standard or simple way is using mread from matplotlib.image. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. And let's go ahead and plot it. So I'm just going to create uh, maybe size here. And if you want to plot an image, then one way to do it is plt.mshow. Okay. Uh, I think. All right. So this is basically, this is Caesar. And let me, I guess, make this just a little bit larger. Okay, so as we can see here, there is different colors, different shades, and maybe say the object of interest for us is just Caesar, okay, or maybe the flag. Then we want to partition basically this image into <clears throat> maybe two or three colors the most, okay or two or three segments. So one segment could be everything that belongs to Caesar, another segment could be everything that belongs to the flag, and the third could be everything else, okay? And so this is one way, for example, also when you perform image uh, recognition because it's easier maybe to recognize uh, a dog just by its shape rather than by the uh, colors, okay? So First off, let's just check out what uh, 
this data looks like. So here's what this data looks like. So one thing that I'm going to do actually, uh, so these numbers all represent pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, just uh, scale this. So the maximum number of pixels is 255. So now everything uh, has a value, like all the pixels have a value between zero and one. So let's check out the shape. So shape, so this is a 3D image in some sense, okay? So what that means is as follows. So it has, so the first guy here represents the height, the second number represents the width, and the third number represents here the number of color channels. Since we have a three, that means we have three color channels. What that actually means is that each pixel is a 3D vector where it's each component uh, represents or stores the intensity of uh, like the first component stores the intensity of the red value of the red uh, color the second of the green uh, and the last component um, the intensity of the blue okay so it's, what we are going to do is we want to uh, group these pixels into or cluster these uh, pixels using k-means clustering into a certain number of clusters, okay? So to do that, the first thing we got to do is we got to reshape this. So in other words, we got to reshape this into an array uh, that's 960 times 644 rows and three columns. Okay, so let's do that. And so here's one way to reshape it. As you know, if I just put this negative one here, it knows that it's going to keep, uh, so one of the dimensions is going to be, like the second dimension is going to be three, and then it will just fill the rest. Uh, it will figure out exactly what the, uh, the, uh, the first dimension uh, needs to be. So let's check the shape of X. And basically this is the first, the number of rows is a little bit over 600,000, and that's just 960 times 644. Great. So what did we do? So this, what we did here is the same as, imagine that this picture was made out of thread. And here you just pick up the thread here and you start unthreading this. You go down and then up and then you go down, up until you reach this other corner. So now you have flattened the thread where each sort of point on your thread is a 3D vector that contains the RGB color. Awesome. So now let's just perform k-means clustering. And say initially uh, I just cluster everything into two uh, segments basically. Okay, so now we have clustered everything into two clusters. All we got to do uh, is recreate the image now. Okay, so let's see how do we recreate the image. So let's write image segmentation. So remember, one of the things that happened here when you cluster everything into two groups basically is the centers or the means of each subgroups were computed so so these are the only two uh, colors that are apparent in our image right now. Now all we have to do is we have to go in here and find all of those pixels that were put in this segment or right that were that were uh, that were assigned to a segment with this RGB type and then we have to go here and find all the other pixels that were assigned to the segment with this RGB type and then just relabel them. And that's actually easy to do. So because when you uh, 
when k means clustering is fit, it also labels all of those points according to, uh, to the cluster. Okay. So, done. Right, so that's what has happened. So see, we have only two RGB types. And all we have to do now is go back and uh, uh, reshape this. And we have to reshape it into the same dimensions as the original picture. Okay. And then we just plot it now. Okay, there we go. See what it's done? Uh, there's only two uh, segments. And then you can make this look a little bit nicer if you wanted to. But what some of the you know modern techniques do is they kind of they mask the object as well. So they, they're really good about figuring out the edges of uh, the objects of interest and uh, the segmentation is much more distinct. But, you know, this is kind of uh, uh, what we get with the k-means clustering. So let's go ahead here and uh, look at four clusters, for example. Okay, let's see, hopefully we don't have to wait too long. Yeah, so this is what, uh, so we have created four different uh, segments here. So one is, for example, for the black part on the dog, and one is for the background, for the green here, one is for the darker shades, and one maybe for the reds uh, on the flag. And similarly, uh, I can use another picture. I used another picture here of my dog, so... This is another picture. And suppose that I only want to distinguish the background and Caesar. Okay, so I'm only, uh, so here I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm only going to um, create two segments basically. So I'm going to perform k means clustering with only two clusters. And let's see what it looks like. And here's what it looks like. So. Again, it's not super great, and as I mentioned, the more modern techniques would mask the whole background with exactly uh, more or less one uh, shade and then mask the object uh, with another one to make it uh, more distinct. Well, this is basically it. So feel free to uh, play around a little bit more. I think in the folder you have a uh, uh, a few more pictures, one with the tanks in the desert, so try to play around with that uh, and see if you get anything interesting. Okay, thank you uh, for listening.